Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. But this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're also going to stick to my home county of Skåne here in the very south of the country. We're going back to a brewery that has featured on the channel a good number of times before and I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years. And this is another example of one of their signature styles. I would always say that this brewery are well known for their kind of hazy and fruity IPAs. They're also doing some really nice Berliner Weisses these days and some kind of pastry stouts as well so those are probably the three best known styles from this brewery and I think it's fair to describe these guys as the best known scones brewery or one of the two best known scones breweries throughout the world these days but um, yeah for this review then we are going to go up towards Helsingborg once again a bit to the northwest of me here in Skjone in the south of Sweden and we're going to have a look at another beer from Brewski Microbrewery. So this particular beer is called the Nelson IPA. It comes in at 6% ABV and uh, yeah, I think you know what style this one is. It's going to be another hazy New England style IPA. But uh, yeah, this beer was released as part of the Local Osmoskalegd Assortment through Systembolaget here in Sweden for March of 2021. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's as good as the other beers that we've had from Brewski in recent times. I've been really impressed with the lower alcohol uh, IPAs that I've had from these guys recently, in fact. So uh, yeah, nice to return to them once again. I always keep an eye out for the different beers that Brewski are releasing. So fingers crossed this is as good as the other IPAs we've had recently. And I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. So uh, yeah, let's go for it then. As always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Brewski Microbrewery before and you will no doubt see me add more to that list in the fairly near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Brewski Microbrewery once again then, on to my brewery notes. So Brewski Microbrewery, as I've told you many a time before, were founded back in 2014 and they're based in Helsingborg in the northwestern part of Skjona here in the very south of Sweden. But the founders of this company are Marcus Jarmusson, Johan Britson, Alfred Olsen and Robin Skoglund. And all of these guys were, a lar were largely inspired having tried the American West Coast craft beers. But uh, Marcus was originally associated with the high nose brand of beer brewed at Huginus Brewery, a little bit to the northwest of Helsingborg again on the Kulaberry Peninsula. And the original Brewski beers were produced out there, but these days the Brewski beers are produced at their own facility in Helsingborg, which you can find in the uh, train yard to the south of the central state. Station. But in 2016, they started their own beer festival, which is called Brewski Val. And in the first year, they had over 40 different brewers, and this has continually expanded year on year. I first went there in 2017, and I've been there every year since it's opened since. And uh, they also used to open up their brewery once a month as a bar, which they called Barski. But these days, They've also got a bar in the city as well, which goes by the same name, and this opened back in 2018. So I think it will soon be about ready to, to um, celebrate its third birthday, in fact. Uh, but they now also brew some beer over in America at Tampa Bay Brewing Company in Florida, and they're looking at opening up a bar in Oslo as well, actually. And Marcus has a distribution company up in Norway called Beerski, which imports Swedish beers into Norway. So it would be really cool, actually, if they did the opposite as well and started to bring some of the Norwegian beers down to Sweden and sold them through Systembolaget because we still don't get all that big a choice of things from Norway come to think of it so I hope that he considers that bringing some of the different Norwegian things down here actually um, but uh, over the course of 2019 these guys produced around a half million litres of beer 500,000 litres and then as of March 2021 when I'm filming this review for you, they've produced around 325 different kinds of beer and they're always putting out a few different things every month, in fact. We do get a fair selection through Sistembolaget, but, you know, we don't get everything that they produce, actually. But, um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Brewski, about Brewski for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on, and you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more 
at all of the different beers that these guys have done. So yeah, let's get on and have a taste of this one then. So as we said earlier, this is the Nelson IPA. It comes in at 6% ABV and uh, yeah, it should come together very, very nicely. So uh, yeah, I like the artwork. I always enjoy the artwork you get on these brewski beers. There you can see the little brewski man chilling down here with his eyeglass and his big moustache and his little smoky pipe thing. But uh, yeah, 330 milliliter can this one. I think I would have paid about 35 Swedish kroners for this, which is roughly about three pounds sterling, roughly. Um, it would be about three euros fifty, and then maybe about four dollars, four dollars twenty-five American. But yeah, three hundred thirty milliliter can this one. Um, so yeah, six percent New England hazy IPA. I think this one actually has some lemon peel, um, lemon skin added into the the brew when it ferments as well. So we're we're maybe looking at a. Uh, pardon me, we're maybe looking at quite a citrusy IPA this one. But um, yeah, one thing I've noticed on this is that in English it doesn't say that it contains hops. Um, so yeah, it doesn't say that in Swedish, uh, the Swedish, Norwegian, Danish thing either. It just says uh, barley, wheat and oats, which is strange. But then in all the other languages it says, um, it says hops. So yeah, there's something strange going on with the little language bit on the side of the brewski cans here. Because sometimes they say that beers don't contain hops in some languages and they say that they do in others. So yeah, maybe they need to check that a little bit off their label designs and things. Um, yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Very curious to see what this beer has in store for us. So a 6% IPA with a lovely rhino on the front. I nearly said hippo there, but then I remember it's got a big thing sticking out of its nose. Yeah, there we are. Oh, this one's got a hell of a head on it. And I just rinsed that glass and I'm getting a bit sticking to the side. But uh, yeah, it looks pretty nice. Um, smells very good as well. Let me just get my OCD happy. There we are. But um, yeah, this one, um, this one I think goes together um, very nicely. I mean, it looks exactly as you'd expect for a modern IPA these days. So as you can see with this one, and as you would expect from a New England IPA, it's poured a lovely, very kind of rich yellow colour. I would compare this one to like a mango juice, to be honest with you. It's got a lovely, very rich, bright yellow colour to it. You can see there's a solid finger of a bumpy, I would say creamy coloured head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. A few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there. But I mean, overall, it does look pretty damn nice. And I mean, there's nothing surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance when you consider what style it is. But yeah, I always like comparing these New England IPAs to different fruit juices. This one, as I say, is quite akin to a mango juice. The colour of your beer, of course, is dependent on one, the type of malts that you use, two, the length of your wort boil. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugar is caramelised, thus you get a darker colour of beer. But the exact colour depends in the first instance on those different hops. And, you know, barrel ageing and adjuncts are also going to play a role in the beer. But, you know, the, if there is lemon peel on this one, I don't think that's going to affect the colour of this beer all that much. And the level of haziness, uh, haziness is down to the oats and the wheat in the beer and the ratio that you use with these. But um, yeah, certainly looks very nice. Let's have a closer look at the aroma of this one then and see how we get on. It certainly looks the part for a New England IPA. Oh, that does smell very nice. Um, it actually, it comes across as very, very smooth. Um, so it's got a little bit, this is interesting because it's got a little bit of a bitiness to it. You can smell a little bit of that slightly bitier quality of the wheat out of this, but then you get a nice mix of smooth white bread and um, kind of a bit of the oaty kind of powdery smooth thing as well. So yeah, there is a good mix of things going on with this one. I think that really, um, I think that's really quite interesting to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, nice smooth white bready sort of thing. A little bit of an oaty creaminess, as I said. Um, well, it's more of a smooth, oaty, slightly powdery kind of thing. So I like that and a soft white bready character as well. Some um, bitey wheaty elements. And uh, yeah, I think that kind of covers the malt base fairly well, to be honest. It's not the most complex of malt bases, but then again, this is a 6%er. It's a kind of regular strength. IPA if you like, um, whereas you'll get a little bit more complexity out of the, the stronger ones from Brewski of course, but like I said I've been impressed with the lower um, ABV ones that I've had 
from Brewski in recent times. So yeah, a bit of weedy bitiness, smooth white bread, you know, and there are one or two little hints of bread crust and a smooth kind of oaty quality. There's maybe a teeny hint of, um, there's maybe a teeny hint of like a Werther's original sort of butter candy thing coming out on this one. But um, yeah, it goes together really nicely from the malty perspective. Now, the hoppy side of things then. So on the hoppy side of things, this beer is quite, um, I would say it's got a nice green component to it. There's a little touch of earthiness to it, which you're always going to get, but it's got a nice big floral aromatic note to it um, on the on that green component. And I would say that overall, the green component of this beer really leans towards that floral aromatic side of things. And at the front of the nose, you get a good little bit of a kind of grassy, zesty sort of vibe to the beer as well. So yeah, that's definitely interesting for sure. Um, yeah, the aroma coming out of this beer, I think, is um, it's very nice, actually. Mm. Yeah, I think it's on the fruity side of things. This beer, there's a little bit of a kind of soft mango-y kind of... Um, yeah, there's a little bit of a kind of soft mango-y um, apricot, you know, underneath. But I think overall, the fruity side of this beer is quite strongly lemony. And if it's got lemon peel in there, that would make sense. Maybe there's a bit of centennial in here as well. You can smell a little bit of a more oily lemon, I think, to this one. And the obvious choice for that would be uh, would be centennial. But then again, you've got things like lemon drop and stuff like that. Cashmere can also give you a wee bit of a lemon limey thing. But, you know, cashmere is very distinctive. So I don't think that's being used in here. Um, but, um, yeah, the, the grassy... Um, the sort of the grassy side of this beer and the zestiness that, that has builds a good bridge with the more citrusy edge of the fruits and then there's a nice little bit of a kind of floral side of things too but um, yeah it's all uh, it is quite nice I do like how that goes together the aroma of this one definitely a little bit more citrusy but then as again then again as I say if there's lemon peel in this one um, then that would make sense I would say to Bruce School they need to fix that ingredients list on the side because it doesn't say lemon peel or whatever in the um, in the ingredients part of the beer, so they need to just they need to just check that. Um, but yeah, I think uh, it's not such a big deal. But you know, it would be nice to know what kind of things are in this beer actually. But um, yeah, it seems to smell very nice. So let's have a closer look at this at this one then and have a taste of it. So the Nelson IPA, six percent ABV from Brewski Microbrewery in Helsingborg here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, skull, cheers. Yeah. It's pretty straight shooting, this one, actually. Um, yeah, um... It's quite sort of session IPA like. I mean, it comes across as a very easy drinking sort of beer, if that makes sense. Um, my first impression of this one is I'm going to say straight away, it's not the most striking beer, if you like, that I've had from Brewski. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's just not quite as Brewski like as some of the other Brewski beers I've had, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I mean, usually the lower alcohol IPAs and stuff that are, that, that you get from Brewski, they've got a little bit more bite to them, just a little bit more of a kind of almost wow factor. Um, but you know, this one, to say it's, it's um, you wouldn't say this is a bad beer, definitely not, but it's just not quite as, as kind of bold and out there as you normally get from Brewski, which is, is kind of interesting. And it, as I say, it is nice enough. It's nice to sit and have a, a drink of this one, but it's just not quite as striking. As some of the other ones that I've had from Brewski previously. So yeah, kind of make of that what you will. Um, but yeah, nice enough to sit and drink. It's quite a summery IPA in fact because of that sort of lemony edge that it has. But yeah, let's try and break down the flavour of this one then and just see how we go. But yeah, there's definitely some, <coughs> pardon me, lemon peel, citrusy skin in this one. So, um, yeah, and I like that aspect about it. I do enjoy a good lemony leaning uh, IPA, in fact. So, yeah, where to begin? Where to begin with this one? 
Um, on the on the fruity side of things, um, as I say, it gives you a little. It comes it comes in very juicy in the beginning, and that kind of does dominate the palate a little bit. But we'll start off with the malty side of the beer as we normally do. But I think you really notice this one, the lime, uh, the sort of the lemon, not the lime. The lemon plays a good role in this one. But um, straight away across the middle of the palate, you've got a nice kind of pale malty base to the beer. You've got a good little bit of that um, underneath this one. You can feel just a little bit of crispness out of that. Then on top of it, you get a nice soft kind of white bready character coming out of it, which I think is pretty good. Um, so, yeah, as I say, the, the, it's got, the, the pale malt, you know, has a bit of crispness to it. It's got a nice little bit of um, kind of soft white bready character, and then you've also got a wee bit of bread crusty note in it as well. It's quite a straight shooting malt base, in fairness. So yeah, pale malt underneath, bit of a kind of thicker white bready note on top of that, and then either side of that middle third of your palate, you can feel there is a little bit more of a doughy quality, and you get a little bit of a kind of bread crusty, grainy character coming out of the beer. So um yeah, I like how this um I like how this goes together. So um yeah the the what do you call it? The multi side of this one's quite straight shooting. Again, on the back third of your palate you can feel there is a wee bit of a you do get some of the more kind of wheaty bitey notes out of the beer and you can feel the yeasty character just sort of sitting on top of that. You've got that more sort of airy yeast. So the beer feels a little bit more kind of high you know well, high is maybe not the right word it just feels a little bit more light and airy on that back third of your palate so the top of the flavor if you like is up here but as you move further forward you can feel it just gradually kind of going down and down like this and then at that border region it kind of condenses down and you've got that pale malty and white bready quality just going forward into the the middle third of your palate so yeah yeasty and a little bit kind of wheaty underneath yeasty and a little bit wheaty underneath on the um on the back third of your tongue a little bit bread crusty then a, a kind of um smoother bready quality coming out of the beer a bit later on but um yeah the i think that covers the malt base pretty well in this one to be honest with you um there's not much more to say about it but on the um the hoppy side of things in the back corners of the palate you've got a nice little bit of earthiness coming out of the beer but as you move further forward, you can feel it progressively gets more and more kind of floral as you go forward. And then round the front curve of the palette, it's got a kind of lighter grassy type quality to it as well. So, yeah, it's kind of got everything you would want from a green component of the beer. It's definitely American hops in this one. So there's no doubt in my mind um, about that, actually. But, um, yeah, it's... Um it's kind of interesting for sure this one. It's just it's quite different from the other brewski beers we've had in recent times actually. So yeah, on the fruity side of this beer then, um it's kind of what you'd expect. Like I say, there's some lemon peel in this one. Um and it's you you can really get that with this one, definitely. There's also some hop in there, but as I said earlier, on that border region between front third and middle third of your palate, you can feel a little bit of a doughy, like a little bit of a slightly doughy or bready quality, a little bit of a kind of bread crusty thing going in there as well. And then the base of that front third of your palate is a nice, smooth, kind of soft, white, bready thing in there. But then on top of that, that's when you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. So if you go towards the back, of that front third of your palate you do get a little bit more of a kind of concentrated lemony citrusy sort of thing and then you know progressively as you move forward it, it stays there i think it is pretty much lemon all the way in this beer um there's maybe a wee touch of apricot underneath that pushes its way out a little bit later on um so yeah yeah i think there's a yeah, there's a bit of a more concentrated lemony citrus in there a little bit more of a um a little bit more of a kind of um, apricotty type note there, and then uh, as you move towards the front of that, the front half of that front third of your tongue, it's got a little bit more of a kind of oily, lemony note in there. So I do wonder if there is a wee bit of centennial in this. But then on top of that, of course, you get the straight up 
lemon peel and the way you can tell that there's been fruit and skin added into this beer as an adjunct is that the fruity notes kind of spread around the front curve of the palate a bit and you can feel them just suppressing a little bit of the green component in the beer and that's a common common thing with um it's a common thing actually with um the um that you'll notice when a lot of these different kind of fruity ipas and stuff like this but um yeah i think this is a pardon me um in terms of the the flavor you can feel that it's quite concentrated on the the um how do you say it? it's quite concentrated on the um let me know it's on the very front tip of your tongue but as you move around the sides you can feel it just sort of lightens up and airs out a little bit so yeah the the fruity side of this beer i think goes together really quite nicely yeah um yeah for me this is a really it's a really nicely um executed beer and from that um from 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 that perspective um it is it, it's nice it is nicely done this one but as i say it's just not the most bold and striking beer that i've had from them i think it grows on me this beer has grown on me over the course of drinking it but as i say it's just not the punchiest and most striking of brewski beers that we've had but uh, I like it. I, you know, I, I do like this one. I don't. I just think it's not quite as crazy, if you like, as some of the stuff that they've done that they've done in um, in recent times. But uh, yeah, it's nice enough. It is a nice, easy drinking beer. This one. This would be a nice beer to just you know sit in in Barsky and have on the tap. I think that's a that's probably a fair way to describe this one actually. So um, yeah, I think we can leave it at that for the, the tasting side of this uh, this review. But yeah, on the, the mouthfeel then, um, this beer is mid-bodied, definitely. Yeah, it's kind of mid-bodied. The carbonation is quite smooth. It's got a good little bit of wetness to it. It's got a good little bit of wetness in there, but it's, it's got a fair little bit of oiliness as well. And I think that suits the lemon peel, come to think of it. So yeah, it's got a little bit of wetness and a little bit of oiliness in there for sure. The um, the lemony notes are, are, you know, it has got a good little bit of citrusy zest to it as well, which I, I quite like. But the malty side of this beer, as I say, is very kind of smooth. It's not really got a sweetness to it. It's quite a smooth and kind of bready element that you get out of this one so I like that about it but there's some nice um trop there is a little bit of tropical fruit in this one as I say a bit of apricot and then it's got a good little bit of a citrusy element to it as well and this beer is not really very high in terms of bitterness either but um yeah I think it's it has grown on me a bit the more that I've drank that I've uh, drunk of it but um it's as I say just not the most striking brewski beer that I've had um, and I've enjoyed, you know, some of the lower alcohol ones that I've had from them. Some of the lower alcohol IPAs have just been a little bit more striking than this one. But, you know, if you want a kind of oily, lemony IPA, then it will go down quite well, actually. I think that's a fair statement to make about this one. So, uh, yeah, another solid enough solid enough beer from Brewski, but definitely not the most kind of striking one I've had from them. It, it grows on me. It does grow on me, this beer. But, um, yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this one just now so yeah this was the nelson ipa coming in at six percent abv with a bit of lemon peel in it um a nice easy drinking beer as i say and uh one that you should check out if that's your you know if you enjoy a lemony leaning ipa so yeah let's leave it there once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from brewski we will no doubt return to them next month because i think they are releasing a few more beers but in the meantime this one was the nelson ipa six percent abv a little bit of lemon peel in it from brewski microbrewery in helsingborg here in skona in the very south of sweden slanja skull cheers and catch you guys in the next review